Since the February 3rd train derailment, East Palestine's municipal water supply has been watched very closely for any sign of change. Now, the train traveled through several communities and through several drinking water supply protection areas before derailing. WKBN digital reporter Jennifer Rodriguez and Storm Team 27 meteorologist Ryan Hillicky looked into some of the vulnerable water supplies. A difference in just about a mile sooner in the location of the February 3rd derailment and the water situation could have been drastically different. If the chemicals would have entered the ground further up the track, they would be in what is called the inner management zone for East Palestine's water supply. An EPA report says a spill in that zone, quote, poses a greater threat to the drinking water and that the area, quote, warrants more stringent protection. But new rules and regulations don't come easy. Shortly after the East Palestine disaster, I reached out to former administrator of the Federal Railroad Administration, Sarah Feinberg, to get her take on the situation unfolding. She said legislating fixes for issues that caused the derailment would be both challenging and timely for the FRA. This rulemaking process, this regulatory process that you have to go through, showing the costs, showing the potential benefits, showing the lives that will be saved, uh, accounting for all of that is really uh, a long process that ends up whittling down any kind of safety regulation into a regulation that is certainly better than, you know, better than not having one, but it's it's not, it's generally not as strong as any safety regulator would like. Feinberg said the fastest way for change is acts of Congress. Now, legislations intended to address railroad safety have already been proposed, but none of them take into account water supplies. We don't know the full scope of potential groundwater impacts in East Palestine, but the location where the chemicals spilled could have been even worse. An EPA water assessment for East Palestine released before the derailment states, quote, East Palestine's source of drinking water has a high susceptibility to contamination because of the lack of a protective layer of clay and the presence of significant potential contaminant sources in the protection area. About a mile down these tracks is where the derailment happened, but where I am standing is within the municipal water supplies inner management zone. Now, in the ground below me, there is little clay or anything to stop contaminants that are introduced into the ground in this location from seeping down to the groundwater. According to an EPA assessment, contaminants that enter the ground in this location could reach the town's well intakes within one year's time. This is what that protection area looks like. As you can see, the Norfolk Southern Rail Line runs directly through it. Had February's derailment happened just a mile sooner, East Palestine's water supply could have been in greater danger. Here's what Water Superintendent Scott Wolf says of groundwater flow near the derailment. So standing at our well field, the groundwater moves to the southeast, which would be towards uh, Sulphur Run, Leslie Run area. So essentially you're moving away from our well field. Um, so I don't see any reason for concern on the village's municipal water. New wells to test groundwater have been drilled and testing is being done weekly, but East Palestine's protection zone isn't the only one the train traveled through. Here in New Waterford, the Norfolk Southern Line runs right through the town's water source protection area inner management zone. Now, this EPA assessment says that New Waterford's public water supply, quote, has a high susceptibility to contamination due to the presence of a relatively thin protective layer of clay on the aquifer, a shallow depth to the aquifer, and the presence of significant potential contaminant sources in the protection area. This is the inner management zone for New Waterford's water supply. The train traveled right through their inner management zone, too. Ground contaminants in this area are expected to reach the well intake within one year's time. And the rail line also comes within roughly 1,500 to 2,000 feet of one of the drinking supply wells for Columbiana. While one well is close to the track, Columbiana's water supply is pulled from a series of 11 wells. The rest are located much further from the rail line. 
The water supplies mentioned before are all groundwater based, but above ground water supplies were also put at risk by the derailment. This is in Negley at the intersection of Jackson Street and Quay Road, and what you're looking at is where Leslie Run intersects with Bull Creek. We know contaminants from the derailment reached this part of the waterway, which ultimately flows into the Ohio River. Now the map on your screen is showing creeks and streams where water flows to a drinking water intake area. Chemical Chemicals introduced to these creeks and streams can potentially make their way to municipal water supplies. The derailed February 3rd train traveled through Sebring, Beloit, Salem, Letonia, Columbiana, New Waterford, and East Palestine. The NTSB pre preliminary report points to an overheated wheel bearing as the cause of the derailment. Now, currently, there are no regulations on placement of detectors used to spot overheated bearings. As we reported yesterday, that could change if proposals in Congress become law. However, none of the proposed legislations include language about placement of sensors as trains enter water protection areas or populated communities.